they will reject that he was weak in hadith and they become upset. They become upset. And Imam Abu Dawood, who I mentioned to you, he has a son and his son is called Abdullah. He has one of the best books, if not the best book concerning the science of the Quran. It's called Kitab Al-Musahif. Everything we need to know about the Mus'haf. If the Mus'haf starts breaking up and tearing, what should you do with it? He'll tell you, bring the Dalil for that. Can you sell the Mus'haf? He'll bring the Dalil for that. Can you take the Mus'haf and make a ta'weez with it? He'll bring everything. Can you take the Mus'haf and lay it on the ground in front of you and read it in front of you on the ground? Can you take the Mus'haf and put spit on your hand and turn the pages? Can you take the Mus'haf into the bathroom, into the toilet? Akramakumullah. Is that something if you were forced to do it? Can you do that? Everything you need to know about the Mus'haf. That was the son of Imam Abu Dawood. And Imam Abu Dawood, when asked about his son in Hadith, he said, he's my son and I love him, but he's weak in Hadith. And yet he's an Imam in Al-Islam. So, Ikhwani, we have to open up our brains a little bit and we have to realize that the science of Hadith, it is not based upon who you like and who you don't like, your whims and my whims. It's based upon rules and regulations. And Al-Imam Ahmed, Al-Imam Abu Hanifa used to make a lot of mistakes in the narration of Hadith. And that's why Al-Imam Ahmed said about him that his Hadith, La Yuktab. Don't write his Hadith. Sufyan al-Thawri, who praised him. Sufyan al-Thawri, when people mentioned Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, when he made those weird comments, he would make the dua that people say if they see a crippled person or a handicapped person. If you see a crippled person, you should say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi aafani min mabtalahu bihi. All praises are due to Allah who protected me from what he tried him with. You see someone crossing the street, he's handicapped. Sufyan al-Thawri used to make that dua when he saw Abu Hanifa. So they criticized him because he was weak in hadith. He made a lot of mistakes in hadith. Sometimes a hadith would come to him and he would use qiyas. And he would use the qiyas at the wrong time and in the wrong place. They criticized him because Al-Imam Abu Hanifa was from the Murji'ah. He was from the lesser degree of Murji'ah. The Murji'ah are and were a deviant group in Al-Islam who said that the deeds and the actions are not a part of Al-Iman. That if a person said with his tongue, I believe in Allah, then he doesn't have to pray. If he doesn't pray, he's still a mu'min. And his iman is on the level of Jibreel, Mikail, Muhammad, Musa, Yusuf, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Some of them are ghulat, and some of them are from the fuqaha. Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, no doubt about it, was from those people. He was from those people. But one of the worst things that they criticized him for, because what? became of the ramifications of this is that Imam Abu Hanifa he used to see the permissibility of revolting against the ruler. When the people would go to him and ask him for permission and a fatwa to revolt against the rulers he would say revolt against them. And this is one of the biggest problems that the people of the Sunnah fought against. And Imam Abu Hanifa was upon that. So Abdullah bin Mubarak the Amir al-Mu'minin in Hadith who loved Ali Imam Abu Hanifa, spent time with Ali Imam Abu Hanifa, defended him. He was with the great scholar of Al-Islam, Ali Imam Al-Awza'i. Al-Awza'i is from Sham. He was bigger and better than those three Imams. His madhab was stronger than the four Imams. Al-Awza'i. Al-Awza'i, he saw Abu Hanifa coming with Abdullah bin Mubarak was with him. And Abu Hanifa came to give them salams. And Imam al Uzai got up and he didn't want to sit with Al Imam Abu Hanifa. And he got up and he left. Abdullah bin Mubarak gave salams. Abu Hanifa and went and caught up with Al Uzai. He said, Why did you do that? Why did you do that to Abu Hanifa? He said, I will not sit with the person who sees the permissibility of drawing the sword on the Ummah of Muhammad. Don't become agitated, don't become upset. This is something that is established with Imam Abu Hanifa. Today, when we find people who this is their way, the way of the khawarij, seeing the permissibility of making khuruj against the leader, one of the people they always refer to is Imam Abu Hanifa. 
They referred to Aisha. They referred to Zubair. They referred to Talha. Radiallahu anhu. As it relates to the companions, when they fought against Ali ibn Abi Talib and they didn't give him the bay'ah, those companions were ulama and they mujtari, mujtahidun. And Allah Azawajal said in the Quran, Radiallahu anhum. So whatever they did, they committed zina, they murdered someone unjustly, they stole something, whatever happened, Allah forgave them for all of their sins. And they're in Jannah. Everyone after them is going to be held to account. So anyone who goes against the Quran and the Sunnah, anyone, whoever he is, we don't take that individual as a delil. So Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, he saw the permissibility of making khuruj and he used to give fatwas in that regard. For that reason, Khwani, Al-Imam Shu'ba ibn Al-Hujjaj, he was the first scholar in Al-Iraq, in Basra to start really paying attention to the chain of narration, the way it became known. So he was a contemporary of Abu Hanifa. He used to curse Abu Hanifa. And that's not good because the Muslim is not a person who is ta'an wa la la'an, as the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-mu'min laysa bi ta'an wa la la'an. The Muslim is not the one who says, your mother is this, your father is that. Your tribe, the people you come from, you work for us. The Muslim shouldn't talk about people like that. Nor is he la'an. He says to the people, la'nat Allah on you, la'nat Allah on him, la'nat Allah on him. So Imam Shu'ba ibn al-Hajjaj, he used to curse Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. Imam Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, one of the ten Amir al-Mu'mineen in hadith, Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, he said about Imam Abu Hanifa, Bainahu wa bain al haq hijabu. Between Abu Hanifa and between the truth, there is a hijab, meaning he didn't see the truth. He was usually wrong. And again, that wasn't true. And Imam Abu Hanifa was right a lot of the times, but because of the way he used to make qiyas and things like that, he made a lot of mistakes that he was criticized for. So don't think that I'm here criticizing him. There are books by scholars that were written that they specifically criticized Al-Imam Abu Hanifa. But it takes the ulama of Al-Islam to pull that out. Like what book? Like the book that's in most of your homes. Sahil Bukhari is a book that criticizes Al-Imam Abu Hanifa. But how does he criticize Al-Imam Abu Hanifa? Does he criticize him the way the people criticize one another today? Based upon desires, based upon calling names, based upon changing the names of their children around. He has a child, and his child's name is Khadija. It's just an example, Khadija, Khadija. Someone comes and changes the man's kunya around, and instead of calling him by the name, the father of Khadija, he'll change his daughter's name around and says the father of Khadiba or something like that. That's not how the scholars were before. Scholars of today, and Imam Abdul Muhsin al Abbad, when he wrote the book Rifqin Ahl Sunnah Bi Ahl Sunnah, in which he was telling the Salafi people, stop fighting each other and take it easy. Stop being like this with one another. He didn't call people's names out. He just brought Dalil. Quran, Sunnah, this is what the Salaf said, and so forth and so on. And Imam al Bukhari, he criticized Al Imam Abu Hanif in his Sahih and the way he made the Tabweed in the babs, the way he brought the babs. Everyone knows that the fiqh of Imam al-Bukhari is the way in the way he brought his babs. We don't have time to deal with that, but books have been written in this regard. The fiqh of Imam al-Bukhari from the chapter headings. So many of the chapter headings he would put there in refutation of Imam Abu Hanifa and his madhab, rahimahumullahu ta'ala. From those people who mentioned him in negative terms who made him weak in hadith. Al-Imam al-Bukhari, Al-Imam Muslim, Al-Imam al-Nasai, Yahya ibn Ma'in, who used to defend him, as well as Al-Imam al-Awza'i, Al-Darqutni, Ibn Adi, Ibn Hiban, and those other scholars that we mentioned, Rahimahumullah. So we have the people who talked about him good, and we have the people who talk about him bad, and the middle course is matlu. What's the middle course? The middle course, very simply, brothers and sisters, is 
قال الامام ابو حنيفه زي معجزه from the 